Ben Fowley is executive director of the Points North Institute and the founder of the Camden International Film Festival. He is a co-founder and co-programmer of the Dock Yard, an award-winning screening series in Cambridge, Massachusetts, and has served on juries at the Silver Docks Film Festival, Hot Docks Festival, DocuFest Kosovo, IFF Boston, and for IFP's Gotham Awards. Ben is currently the nominee's chair for the Cinema Eye Honors for Nonfiction Filmmaking and a member of their Industry Advisory Board and Nominating Committee. He serves on the Maine Film Commission and is an adjunct instructor at Unity College's Center for Environmental Arts and Humanities. Welcome to the PR Maven Podcast, a podcast all about growing your network and building your brand through traditional and digital networking techniques. I'm Nancy Marshall, the PR maven and CEO of Marshall Communications. I've been strengthening brands through PR for over 35 years, and now I'm celebrating the success of executives, influencers, business owners, and entrepreneurs from all around the world, all of whom have cultivated their brands and broadened their networks through traditional and digital networking methods. Each week, I interview one of these interesting and influential individuals and provide an opportunity for you, the PR Maven Nation, to gain insights from their strategies and stories. So stay tuned for this week's episode, and thanks for listening. So Ben, to kick things off, tell us about your career and how you got into it in the first place. Sure. Uh, so I am the executive and artistic director of the Points North Institute and the founder of the Camden International Film Festival. Um, I was born in Maine, grew up uh, in the Midcoast region, and um, really kind of fell in love with the filmmaking process. Actually, it's a funny story. Uh, when I was in high school, uh, Stephen King shot a film called Thinner, literally in Camden, and I spent the majority of my time um, just hanging out with the crew members, really getting an understanding of what it takes to make a, a film. Um, in college, I really explored a, a deeper appreciation and interest in, in the filmmaking process, but really tied it with, um, with journalism as well. I had a, a focus on, on film production and journalism at Emerson College, and it was there I really kind of started to understand the impact storytelling could have on um, really helping people better understand the world around them. Uh, it was also at that time that I was trying to figure out, you know, what I want to do with my, with my, with the rest of my life. And at that point, we're talking 1999 to 2003 was when I was in, went, in studying in my undergrad. Uh, the majority of the, the, the film industry was about independent narratives. We're talking Quentin Tarantino, um, big independent budget projects. So everyone wanted to be out in L.A. And, and Emerson, my, the school I was attending, was really pushing students to go, go to L.A., become an intern, work your way up the system, you know, the standard process that you need to do to make it to, be, to become a Hollywood mogul. And at that point, I realized quickly that, you know, my, my studying in journalism and my real interest in, in telling real stories uh, was, was trumping uh, the interest I had to go out to L.A. and work in the, the Hollywood industry. And the documentary space was much smaller then. Uh, I'm sure we'll talk a little bit about the the, the significant impacts of, of the documentary form over the past 15 years. But when I was in college, it was kind of like the, um, the bastard stepchild, so to speak, of, of, the, of the, the filmmaking industry. But I knew that I really wanted to commit myself to that, that, uh, that space. And... Um, you know, instead of having to go out and intern and, and work my way up through a system that I didn't necessarily believe in, I decided, why don't I try and find a way to marry the two things I love, telling real stories um, and, and finding a way to work in a, a real community, um, a community that I love. So that was the myself um, in college putting the pieces together to say, maybe I can start uh, a film festival in a town like Camden in Rockland that has been supporting the arts for you know, centuries, um, and see what, see what happens with that. I can make the connections, you know, through, 
the 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 creation of a film festival that would be giving back to a community that I, I cared so much about. And so that was the the impetus to start the Camden International Film Festival. Um, I, I started in 2005. I graduated college in 2003. So it was a really quick turnaround. Um, and that's been my uh, progression uh, as, a, as a programmer, curator, and now as an executive director. Certainly the festival has grown tremendously over the past 15, 16 years. Um, we are now a, you know, one of the most respected documentary film festivals in the world. And uh, four years ago, we launched an umbrella organization called the Points North Institute that was really um, designed to foster the growth of diverse filmmakers uh, across the across the country, um, creating a sense of community here in Mid Coast Maine that would allow us to to um, support the creative voices uh, of you know fifty to sixty filmmakers a year, help them get their projects off the ground in front of the industry, uh, and really make significant impact in in the the the, the trajectory of, of many artists' careers. So. <laughs> I I'm almost overwhelmed. It's like I want to press pause because I have so many thoughts. Like, first of all, congratulations! How amazing what you have created from an early age. So you must have had not only the sparks of creativity, but uh, confidence that you got. I'm sure from Emerson, but also those must have come from your upbringing. Your parents must have instilled that sense of, uh, you know, like you could do whatever you put your mind to. And the other thing I want to say is um, you've talked about storytelling and you talk about the importance of community and the whole essence of the PR Maven podcast is about building your brand by building your network. So Obviously, you've built your network uh, there locally, but also you mentioned internationally, like the film festival is 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 respected and known worldwide. So congratulations. It's so much. So awesome. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> no, thank you. Yeah, you know, it's funny. I'll make I just a, a point to that. Um, the, the whole kind of DIY mentality, when I was in college, I was I was my 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 creative passion is really is is uh, music and I kind of assumed I would go and study uh, music would be a bigger part of my career. I realized that um, pretty early on that um, uh, you know it, it's it's that's that's what I like to do to kind of uh, have an outlet. But what was really formative for me was the idea, um, and this is something I think a lot of people were doing back in the early two thousands was. You know, forget the the industry. Do it yourself and build your audiences. Build your you have we have this is before social media, you know. But it was really about you know being committed to something and building it yourselves uh, over time. And and I think that sense of commitment through starting a record label and being in a band was really helpful for me to transition to starting a film festival and building a brand and building a community, et cetera, et cetera. So. Um, I don't know if that's still a, a thing that is happening. Um, you know, obviously it is through the social networks that people are creating, but um, I, I look back at those days really, really um, with great, uh, great admiration. Well, along those lines, what would be your best tip for how to um, accomplish PR, marketing, social media, or personal branding goals? There's so many different platforms, and you know, as a as an organization of about five full time staffers now, we're always talking about the new platforms and new opportunities. I think really what it comes down to, though, is really understanding what it is you're trying to do, whether it's what you're trying to sell or what you're trying to build. And I think from there, you know, we were able to identify audiences, um, uh, you know, that we could we could try to attract, and and then the platforms become avenues to help you get to those audiences, not um, avenues to help you create those audiences. You know, I think that was the, that was a key realization I had early on, which is, um, you know, we've got a really committed, uh, you know, kind of community here. And I, when I look at, think of my community in Maine, I think of it as really the entire state because it's, it's large, but there's only a million to, you know, 1.2 million people here. So it does feel very kind of community centered. We also have this kind of um, growing documentary community that is um, spread across the U.S. and, and globally. And so, um, you know, I was lucky enough to be based in Boston for my college career and for about a decade after as I was developing the festival. Uh, that has a really rich 
documentary community that I was able to plug into and, and build from there. But, you know, again, understanding where we wanted to, to target first to build those communities allowed us to, um, cause again, this is before Facebook and we were, we're, st- we're talking friends during my space when I was starting <laughs> the festival, which doesn't exist anymore. You're dating yourself, um, Ben. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Totally. Um, but I think it's like, you know, the, the best advice I can have is it, you know, there's, there's so many distractions out there. There's so much going on. There's so much misinformation and, um, you can get lost trying to, and, and I, and platforms like Facebook are getting harder and harder to find the audiences. It really comes down to, for us, a tangible experience you can have with somebody. And I, I do believe that uh, the, the platforms, the social platforms that exist are, are great to, to, to share information, but to really engage with somebody, it has to be experiential. It has to be you know, um, a, a, an interaction. And, and, and cinema is magic in that sense, right? Like people have, there's a reason why movie theaters have existed through booms and busts in the economy. People want to go sit in a dark room, watch a screen with other people. And we're doing that. We're also giving the opportunity to talk to filmmakers and, and figure out the creative process, et cetera, et cetera. So I feel like shouting from the mountaintop because you're, you are just saying so many things that align perfectly with the PR Maven podcast premise which oh, is <laughs> yeah which is like you've got to build your network you've got to know your audience you've got to be of service to your audience and then you need to connect with people and you need to bring them together for shared experiences because i believe that you know all the online platforms are great you know you can connect with people but you're not really friends with somebody you don't know somebody until you have been actually in the same space and there's actually chemicals that transmit between humans when they're in the same space, that what I call the happiness chemicals of oxytocin and serotonin. And so, you know, sitting in a dark room, watching a film and having all those feelings and emotions, but together, you know, where humans are together in the same space, it's, it's uh, what we're, because we are social beings, some of us are a little more social than others, but we're all social beings and, uh, you know, we're created to have these shared experiences. So, um, and whether you're doing it on Friendster or MySpace or Facebook or TikTok or, you know, they're all just means to connect our messages with others and with and tell stories. You know, again, I always talk about how Procter and Gamble created soap operas back in the 1950s and 60s so that they could get housewives to like watch their stories every day and then buy their soap. And um, you know, that's what we're doing today in in marketing. We might not be selling soap, but we're trying to tell stories that engage our targeted audiences. So yeah. Absolutely, and, and 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 you know the story of the development of of the film festival, because um, it's a, it's a pretty, <clears throat> you know, it's a pretty rare thing to have a, a film festival with as much, um, you know, connection to the greater greater industry, um, in a place like uh, Mid Coast Maine, right, where there's fifteen thousand you know, year round population. The the the, the festivals that we're competing with in terms of the calendar, when we fall in the calendar year and the films that we're attracting, you know, there it's Toronto, it's New York, it's, uh, you know, Telluride would be the only other kind of similar example to us. We, we've been able to really leverage the idea that it's an experiential, uh, you know, kind of um, sense of connection to others that has helped us grow our brand. And, you know, I always tell the story, um, when I started the festival, I thought the biggest hurdle was going to be that we were in a small town because it took, you know, 10 years to get audiences to fill the theater. You know, the first few years, we would do screenings and there would be 15 people. Um, it was never, it was never uh, distressing because I think we knew we were constantly about building that audience one brick at a time, over time. But as a young kid trying to figure out this is going to be something that could pay pay me and pay others to keep it going um because at 23 you don't really care you know you can you can do some work on the side to to put towards your passion but you know when you have a family and and things get a bit more real um these these passions need to become professions and um 
you know, so I was always like, is this going to be a, is this a sustainable and scalable uh, organization? And because of the location. And I would say seven, eight years in, I started realizing, actually, that's the perk. That is the beauty. Because we can create this, this experience, this shared experience, this, this sharing, of, sharing of ideas, building of relationships um, in a way that festivals in New York or Toronto or L.A. or Berlin can't because you go to these places and you don't walk away with anything tangible. You don't have a relationship that with, the, with the, the, the festival or the people participating in the festival like you do in a small town. So... Um, that was a, a huge realization for me, and I think again helped us figure out how we could market, brand, and promote uh, the the work that we do. Well, and of course, Maine has for centuries attracted artists, authors, poets. I mean, Camden, Maine, especially. You know, that's you know, you, of course, Camden is known as Peyton Place, right? Do you, have you tied in with that yeah, history? It is at all? the original. Yeah, yeah the original. Oh Peyton well, you know, Place. it's funny enough because yeah, my um, my my family going way back. I'm I'm a, my daughter's a fifth generation Mainer, which I'm very proud of. Uh, <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, Peyton's Place was shot in Camden. My f- grandfather purchased the cinema that after World War II purchased a cinema where Peyton's Place premiered, which is in Camden. Um, he turned it into the Five and Dime. I don't know if you're ever coming through here, or if anyone listening remembers the Five and Dime in Camden. It was probably around until, you know, the Walmart explosion of mid-90s. Now it's a antique mart. But it's still in the family, extended family. And there's always this kind of every, every so often someone will come up and be like, hey, you're in the movie business. What about this as a theater? Um, but it's funny because that history is still there. Clearly, um, main media workshops, the main photo workshops, as it was called back then, paved the way for me to step into a community uh, and an, uh, I, I, you know, an identity that had been built by that organization over the past 30 years, 40 years, um, helped me launch the festival. I, you know, there, I can't tell you how many times I'm out, out and about at the fest, festival circuit and people are like, oh, Camden the workshops. I was there. I remember that. So they had built this network themselves over, uh, you know, several decades that I was able to um, help enhance and, and, and feed off of as we were building our community. So it was a really, you know, clearly very um, grateful that this community supports the arts as they do. Um, and the state supports the arts as it does. Um, and we just feel like we're, we're, like you're saying, doing something that has been in existence for centuries. We're just doing it with a, a, a slight bent towards the cinematic arts. So, Right. And again, Maine has attracted authors, artists, photographers, <laughs> filmmakers, creatives of all kinds. I mean, I think part of it is, is the natural beauty um, you know, certainly the natural beauty of our coast. Uh, Monhegan Island is obviously a place that draws um, artists and poets. And uh, it just, it's incredibly beautiful. But also, I just think there's something in the air here that that inspires creativity. <laughs> and also, you know, the people are open-minded. You know, they, they, welcome, they welcome creatives here as well, I, be- I believe. I, I completely agree. I would I would add two things. One is that my wife is a photographer, a uh, fine art photographer, and she coming from London, uh, she's just blown away by the light, you know. And so going back to the the something in the air or the the, the, the landscape, I mean, as a, as a painter, as a photographer, the light here is 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 just incredible. Uh, it's similar to why people move. Hollywood is in California. There's 300 days of sun. Um, but the light is, is gorgeous as well. So, you know, there's something to be said about, um, the things we might take for granted, uh, you know, when we're, when we're living in a state as beautiful as Maine, it's, it's all about the light. I keep reminding myself, but I I see this time and again, uh, and I'm sure you do when you, when you, uh, 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 hold this podcast, Maine is so special because here it's, it's one of those places still that you can a good idea, you can you can figure out a way to get it done. And I have a number of friends who are around my age. I'm 39, maybe a little older, maybe a little younger. 
who are doing things that I know would be nearly impossible to do in places like New York. So, you know, this kind of um, migration out of the urban centers for people that have a passion and want to commit to it, um, it's really special to see, um, you know, that there are still places in this country where you don't need uh, uh, Silicon Valley backing to get to get your passion made. Well, you know, I think maybe it's a blessing and a curse because we have this can-do spirit here in Maine, and you know, it's like, well, why, Jesus, I'm going to do that. Don't don't you tell me I can't because I'm going to do that. And I I kind of am evidence of that myself because, uh, you know, almost thirty years ago, I said I'm going to start my PR agency, and I really had no idea what I was getting into. I had never worked for a PR agency. I had never used a PR agency. I just had this vague notion in my mind. <laughs> and um, and I think And now we, look where you are. Yeah, right? look at <laughs> Yeah, it's something and part of it is having that grit and tenacity and persistence and just uh stick having a, a vision in your mind and sticking with it. So but a big part of it too is having a network behind you. So how has your network been helped you to advance your career and your festival? Yeah, so I think the best the best way I can describe it is is the, <clears throat> the network that we um and cuz it's a pretty interesting um I would say uh, I don't know what the right term would be, but uh it's a pretty strategic move that we made, I would say back in 2010. The festival was five, six years old. It was it was doing everything that it was supposed to be doing at the time. We were getting great films, audiences were getting stronger every year, but it was still very much you know, the, a full volunteer uh, commitment from everybody top down, myself included. Um, and at that point I was starting to realize, okay, for, for us to get this brand, the Kim international film festival out there more, more strategically to attract filmmakers and industry here to see what we're doing. Cause I knew that if we could get them here to the festival, get them to Maine, they would fall in love with it. And then they could help, help support us when they go back to the various, various, uh, urban centers. Um, the challenge was we had no, you know, we had no marketing budget. We barely had a budget at all. Everything we were, everything that we were raising was going directly into getting filmmakers here, creating a, an experience that was really trans, trans, uh, transcendive, uh, transcendive. Um, but we had kind of a, a loophole switch that we thought might work. And that was about, trying to find ways to raise some money around getting a handful of industry members to come to, uh, to come to the festival. Um, so in 2010, we launched what we call the Points North Forum, which is an interesting story. We you circle back around to what our organization name is now. It was a very straightforward, probably day and a half long conference. We brought in members from Tribeca, from Sundance, from the BBC, from PBS, uh, and we really kind of tried to um, market it towards filmmakers in Boston, filmmakers in New England to say, hey, this is a really affordable way for you to kind of get to know what the industry is looking for. But it was also a marketing opportunity for us too because, again, we knew if we could get the the major industry here, they would go back out and be like, oh, there's a new festival. you got to go see it and kind of build this kind of grassroots campaign that we we knew would really match our, our identity as an organization. And that worked probably was the most strategic move we've made um, as an organization. It helped us separate ourselves from the slew of film festivals that exist in the country. As you probably know, every town has one. We, we can now say we were a film festival and industry event. And also, instead of putting money into one ad that maybe no one would see, we put it into, into 10... 10 industry members to come and then build that kind of network um, from the ground up. And that's what we've been doing for the past decade. Uh, the, the, the idea of Points North started out as a, an opportunity to kind of develop the New England filmmaking community. We've seen that grow so tremendously that, you know, obviously it was the impetus for us to, to launch the umbrella organization that is now the Points North Institute of which SIF is the major, pro it's major program. So it was a bit of a switch in terms of really us trying to figure out how we could build that network. And now 
we the the work that we're doing with the industry who are coming in is probably half if not more of the resources that we need to raise for the festival itself so they they they've kind of buoyed each other is what i'm trying to say i think we've invested in in the idea of the points north brand and and building a space for the industry to come to camden um and that's all been built alongside the festival and as that as that that kind of uh, venture has grown more interest in, from the industry has happened therefore making sif much more of a relevant brand um you know competing again with some of the major major festivals in the world we would not have gotten i don't think to the stature that we are as a film festival if we hadn't invested in the idea of what points north could become if that makes any sense so that was kind of a, a you know a bit of a gamble because you know it might have been ten thousand dollars we were investing in in industry but those industry members who were coming here as representatives from tribeca are now repping at netflix at not not geo at cnn at every major um industry partner that we work with and they're helping us develop programs and you know sponsoring the festival so it's it's um it's really amazing to see that the people that we were working with 10 years ago have become such an intricate part of our family and are now helping us develop as, as an institution that would that will ideally be helping to rethink uh, the impact the documentary form can have, not only on artists, but also on communities. Well, kudos to you for, again, sticking with it. I know it's not easy. There's there's challenges every step of the way. And you've uh, obviously been a leader. And also you've been part of this this community locally, statewide, nationally, and obviously internationally. So I want to take a quick break, Ben. I want to come back and talk a little bit about Recovery in Maine, which is a project that Marshall Communications worked with you on, and uh, we enjoyed helping promote that very important important documentary film tour uh, statewide. So um, we're going to just take a quick break and then come back with Ben. But first, I want to share some news with PR Maven Nation that we have a listener line now. So you can call in to 207-620-9075, get in touch with me and and ask questions, share feedback or ideas for the podcast, and we'll share your comments live on the podcast, including who you would like to hear on the show as as my future guest. So I look forward to hearing from members of PR Maven Nation. And uh, we're going to take a quick break now and be back with more in just a moment. The trek across Maine is one of Maine's best traditions. For more than 35 years, thousands of bicyclists and volunteers have participated to raise funds for the American Lung Association. This year, the scenic route begins in Brunswick and takes riders through Freeport, Lewiston, Belgrade, and Waterville with great views of the Kennebec River. The ride has one, two, and three-day options, as well as many volunteer opportunities. So mark your calendars for the trek across Maine, Father's Day weekend, June 19th through the 21st. The registration deadline is May 20th, so don't miss out. Visit trekacrossmaine.org today. That's T-R-E-K acrossmaine.org. Welcome back. And today we're talking with Ben Fowley, founder and executive director and artistic director at Points North Institute. And I want to dive back in and talk about a recent project that Marshall Communications worked with Ben and his team at the Points North Institute on, which was a series called Recovery in Maine. And I don't know if you know this, Ben, but it was a little bit nostalgic for me to be involved with this tour because I worked with uh, Maine Public Television back in the 1980s on a tour called The Chemical People, which was actually about addiction in Maine. And we did it was a, a PBS series uh, that we we took on the road and we went to town halls and schools and showed these documentaries. And then we had panel discussions. So when we first got the call about recovery in Maine, I was like, 
Wow, this is like coming full circle. Um, so yeah, tell tell us a little more about Recovery in Maine and uh, where you stand with that tour now. Yeah, sure. Um, well, first of all, thank you so much for for helping us out. I, I you know, we, we've the whole point or the whole uh, the amount of impact that program can make really comes down to awareness and clearly having you guys on board uh, was a tremendous help. So thank you. Uh, the, the, the recovery in Maine, uh, tour is part of a larger program called points North impact. And that's, that's a program that we've been developing for about six years now. Uh, the, the kind of, uh, quick description is, is it's, a it's a program that is issue based. Uh, really we're looking for issues that are national in scope, but very relevant to Maine and Maine communities, Mainers, uh, and it was really about for us trying to figure out as as we talked earlier on about developing the artists that are making films. We also wanted to make sure while we were doing that that we were staying connected to our core community, which was you know Maine uh, and communities in Maine. And so we were trying to figure a way a, figure out a way to um, get outside of our core hyper local communities of Camden, Rockport, and Rockland, and. Um, really do something to 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 show show off the, the the impact and power that documentary story storytelling can have on community building and uh the first so we we launched the program with the support of uh the university of maine center on aging it was really tackling the idea of alzheimer's and dementia related illnesses um we collaborated a lot with portland press herald who at that point had a really really incredible um interactive uh, feature at, I think that was across about a year focusing on the, the impacts that dementia related illnesses would have on the state, uh, over the, the next 20, 30 years. Uh, and we found a number of really powerful films that address the issue, uh, family stories, uh, personal films about people coping. We got the films out into theaters, um, had robust conversations around, um, uh, dementia illnesses and, and um, really kind of put together the blueprint of what what could really work if we had a, a you know, a real budget behind the program. And it was at that point I already knew that, um, unfortunately, the, 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 the stories about addiction and opiates uh, were already starting to bubble up. But we, we as an organization, weren't quite... Uh, organized enough to really tackle such an important issue. Um, but through the work we do with developing filmmakers, we had a project called Recovery Boys uh, made by a filmmaker, Elaine McMillan Sheldon, who pitched that project literally in Camden at our festival. Um, it later went on to be picked up by Netflix, produced, and uh, completed. So the, the first public... Uh, uh, kind of announcement of that project happened in Camden. It was about uh, several young men in a recovery uh, farm in West Virginia where the filmmaker is from. When we, when we knew that project was completed, we knew that we had the material that we could use to create the Recovery and Maine program. And so from that point on, we were developing ways in which we could build partnerships to help us get outside of our community and and support the tour so we started this tour in the at the end of 2017 with a kind of a mid-coast main tour sponsored by uh, penn bay healthcare foundation uh, that got the attention of main health which we collaborated on, with on a statewide tour all through 2018. Um, and this year we were we were approached because uh, one of the members of um, the opioid aw awareness response team from the state of Maine was at a screening in Pittsfield and and really saw what could happen when you bring people together in a theater uh, to to tackle some of the issues as a community, right? And we were able to continue that program with a number of screenings, um, bring you guys on to help us spread the word. Uh, the idea really comes down to um, thinking through bringing a community together in a way that is takes the stigma out of the conversation, right? Like no one wants to go talk about challenging issues about dementia or um, drug misuse 
in a hospital or you know there a, a place that already has challenges for people to get in the door we kind of said well what happens if we make it a free community screening and we bring a netflix director in and we make it something about just you know go to the movies go to the movies as a family and and, and then let's have a conversation and so that was that has been uh really the 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 way in which we could build uh, build i think a momentum around uh the 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 tour and the program to be honest it's been the most rewarding program i think we've my staff and myself included have, have done at the festival at the organization certainly in the past several years um because we see it time and again at every screening whether there's 30 people or 150 people uh, people open up about the challenges that they're having within their family within their community and real, real work can at least get started in these spaces because a community is coming together and saying, we, we are aware of the problem. We don't know how to take the next step to solving it, but we're here to help figure out and we're here to talk about it. So after every screening, we have a, have a robust panel. It's usually someone from law enforcement. It's usually someone in the recovery process themselves. It's uh, people working with the uh, working within the recovery system, um, and it's you know employers who have who have helped to um, get people who are uh, you know transitioning um, back into the that in, back into the workforce. So um, you know again, it's really a, the, the the film itself is just the catalyst to get the conversations going, and um, it's been really really exciting to see over the past two years. It's probably close to 35, 40 screenings. I don't have the exact number off the top of my head. We've covered every county. Um, and we've covered the entire state. I mean, from Caribou to Kittery, um, Rangeley, all over the place. And at this point now, we're 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 thinking through what the next step may be. We're working on trying to do a, another large event in the Portland area, but we're also trying to figure out how we can get this these films like Recovery Boys into high schools and into um, uh, correctional facilities, into prisons, and trying to find ways that we can really um, go a bit deeper than a public screening and and uh, start a conversation, you know, much earlier on. Well, I attended the event in Kittery uh, myself, and I found it really powerful, again, for the same reasons we talked about earlier. Uh, the film itself, I mean, it was just great storytelling. Like, I felt like I knew those people myself, and, and I could feel their pain, and I could feel what they're going through, but also being there with doctors and police officers and school officials and municipal leaders, like at bringing everybody together in the community for this really important conversation. Um, it really stuck with me. I mean, I'm feeling it as I'm saying it out loud right now. And um, I really believe in it. So to have had the opportunity um, to help promote that uh, was really important for me. And um, I feel grateful that that you thought of us. So um yeah, Ben. Thank you. It was it was really a, a powerful experience. So, Ben, what is um, the best way if people want to follow up and get in touch with you about the Camden International Film Festival or Points North Institute? What's the best way for them to follow up with you? Yeah, sure. So our website is uh, pointsnorthinstitute.org uh, or camdenfilmfest.org. Either one of them will get you to our our website. Uh, from there, you can see all of our calendar of activities and events. We do have a few coming up. Uh, one is a new uh, kind of micro festival we call the Cabin Fever Film Fest, which takes place uh, February 28th, 29th, and March 1st this year in Camden. Um, and it will also have the dates around the festival, uh, SIF, which is actually a little bit later this year uh, because we're trying to um, – uh, avoid Rosh Hashanah and a few other industry events. So uh, the festival itself will be October 1 through 4 this year. Um, my email is on there. It's been at pointsnorthinstitute.org. If anyone listening is interested in learning more about uh, the recovery program or bringing the recovery program to their community, uh, we have forms on our website. Uh, I think the easiest way to think, it, think about it is if you go to our website, there's a tab that says community. And community is really 
um, all the work that we're doing in the state of Maine. So you'll see our, our screenings that are happening outside of the festival, all of our, our statewide events, and then the, the Recovery in Maine program will be there. So you can find any information about upcoming screenings there um, or ways in which you can, you can help support the program and bring it to your community. Well, I want to congratulate you for all of your hard work and how you've built these successful brands and how you've built your own personal brand exactly how I would how I would uh, advise you to, which has been through in-person events and online, as well as um, you know, creating these beautiful creating and promoting documentary films. So um mm-hmm. Congratulations to you, Ben, and and thank you for joining me and PR Maven Nation today. Uh, I really enjoyed the conversation, and I think we're going to have to keep it going. <laughs> yeah, likewise. I really appreciate um, I appreciate uh, you you including me, and and just want to congratulate you as well on all the work that you do for the state. Uh, your name has come up. I can't tell you how many times over the past fifteen years. So I've been again just grateful we had the opportunity to work together on this program, and um, just want to thank you for all the, the work that you do to help make sure organizations and um, institutions uh, help get their word out across the state. Thanks, Ben. Part of it is just, you know, telling your story and, and keeping, uh, you know, again, going out there, making connections, telling your story, and helping others to tell their story. So uh, I guess we're both doing that. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> so thank you, Ben, and uh, thanks to everyone in PR Maven Nation. Uh, please subscribe and uh, leave a rating and a review and, and uh, suggest to a friend that they listen to PR Maven podcast as well. Have a great week. That's it for this week's episode. I'd like to thank you for listening, and if you feel that you've gotten value out of today's conversation, consider leaving a five-star review on iTunes or whatever app you're using to tune in. If you haven't subscribed yet, you should do so. I release a new episode each week, and subscribing will make sure you get an alert when there's a new episode. You can also join the PR Maven Nation by going to prmaven.com slash nation and clicking join. It's free and it's a great community of like-minded individuals who are all looking to learn and grow from one another. If you have an Alexa-enabled device, be sure to add the PR Maven Marketing Minute to your daily flash briefing menu. Thanks again for listening and have a great rest of your week, PR Maven Nation. <laughs>